usually they have a number written down here. This one happens to be a 70 liter. They're super compressible. Try not to, you don't need a lot of stuff. Jim was talking about putting your stuff in a duffel bag with all your trucking poles and boots and whatnot. This is a good option for the way to pack up your shoulder straps and your waist belt for travel on an airplane. And it's really simple to, to pack your backpack like this. And everybody should know how to do this when you're throwing it in a car or something like that. Um, you'll want to do this. Shorten up your waist strap belts, tuck them behind the shoulder straps like this, then like this, and then just fasten them right in there. Oh. And then they're locked in place. The waist strap is folded over like that. The shoulder straps are all tight and you're done. That's it. Um, in the event that we do take white gas, it always goes on the outside of the pack. If the seal broke and you didn't know it and fuel started leaking out, it's on the outside of your pack and it's not going to contaminate your food or any of your clothing or any of the other yeah. first aid kit or anything else. So fuel always goes on the outside and any pokeables like this guy right here, it, it, they strongly recommend trucking poles. Bring what you want. I strongly recommend at least bringing one. I don't use two anymore, but I'd like to have one. It takes a little pressure off your knees, dab for balance, that sort of thing, and it totally works. This one is a heavy one. There's super light ones out there, you know, and they're telescoping, so you can pack them down really, really easily. You recommend the ones that slide like that versus the uh, tent fold? Yes, kind of yes. Okay. Having them um, length adjustment mm -hmm. is fantastic. Okay. Especially if you're um, putting up a fly or something like that. Sometimes you can telescope it in the middle mm -hmm. and get it at just the right height, or you can okay. get it at just the right height if you're guying out a line or something like yeah. that. It also works great for first aid scenarios. So if somebody broke a leg, you could you could use part of it to splint it with, and another part for something else. Okay. You don't need like two poles. This is like. This is three sections in one. So again, they can split a pair. So they're, they can split a pair. And I have spares. If anybody needs some, I have like three pairs of these. So first come, first serve with that. Okay. Um, I'm just going to go through the anatomy of how this pack is packed. And I'm going to just start with the top. This top unit is usually called the brain. And this is usually where your ditty bag is going to go. I just pack everything in one mesh bag. I don't have free floaters in here, so when I open this up, a bunch of stuff falls out everywhere. And this is the ditty bag. This is all my little junk. All right, what's in here? Let's find out. Mostly, most of the 10 essentials, which will be map and compass, flashlight with extra batteries, Part of my sun protection, which is sunglasses, in the bag there's like hat and bandana and I'll show you that stuff. Um, and then fire starter will be in here as well. There'll be my own miniature first aid kit. Now we're going to have a troop first aid kit so you guys don't need to kill it on it. But if you happen to be you and two other scouts are going to food supply and someone falls and skins their knee, you might have some ibuprofen and some band-aids and some cough drops and lip balm and an ace bandage and some duct tape and just super minor little whatever things. Not, not anything too heavy. First aid kit, pocket knife is gonna go in there. Extra food. I recommend bringing no more than two pounds of your own candy food stuff on the trip. And bring two pounds. You're gonna want it. Like we're gonna be on day four in the back country and I, like to open the backcountry trading store. We can all see what we got. Have you done this before, Gavin? Yeah. <laughs> Denver, I know you have. Eric, I don't know if you have. I love it. But it's like the, the store opens and like it's on. It's Skittles, Swedish Fish, whatever. And everybody else's food is always better than yours. Any, any other little things that you like? I like to bring noon hydration things like this to put in my own water bottle. Of course, that water bottle is then contaminated and goes in the smellables. 
at the end of the night. So uh, we'll go over bottles here next. Lip balm, small thing of Ben's 100. It's half full, it's light. If there's bugs, this stuff totally works. Um, Dr. Bronner's for just, just a little half to quarter bottle, but it's peppermint, it smells nice for, for doing some bathing on the trip. Um, a little bit of cord, pen, toothbrush, you know, your toiletries are gonna go in this thing. Um, and I brought a notebook and a pen, so whoever's the scribe, it's a waterproof book. So you can write in the rain. The scribe book is super important in case there's a first aid scenario, or not a scenario, an actual incident. We can take notes and keep track of important information about victims and what happened and information that needs to get relayed to um, healthcare professionals later down the road. So super duper duper easy. Sometimes people put their hydration bladder in the top also with the hose coming out. Uh, but most of these packs are going to have a thing on the inside where those go. Um, Dan, did you bring that... Could you grab that SPD bag over there? It has some of it. It has the Troop 70 packing list in it. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to lay everything out. Trekking pole. Diddy bag, fuel bottle. That's it. So I'm referencing the Troop 70 overnight backpacking equipment list that I wrote, I think, three, maybe four years ago. It talks about camping gear, talks about the backpack, talks about all your little sleeping gear and whatnot. We're gonna go over all this stuff. In the top, so the first thing I take out, it was the tent, but the tent should have been deeper in there, is the first aid kit. And what this contents are, and it's gonna be right on top. Whoever, whichever scout happens to be the medic of that day, will be carrying the first aid kit. Other things right on top, rain gear. You don't need much, but they need to be waterproof. Small raincoat, small rain pants. And that's, those are part of your 10 essentials as well. This is a must-have. It's a Nalgene brand, wide mouth water bottle. Everybody needs to have at least one of these. It's not gonna puncture, it's not gonna break. Anybody else has a water filler, it'll filter right onto here. You can put tablets in, you can pour water in and out really, really, really easily. Other things may fail, this won't. It's non-collapsible, so you're just kind of stuck with that. Um, and then there's the alternative, and I highly recommend these. It's a hydration bladder. This is a nice small size, it's two liters. It, it goes inside the back of your backpack. It rests against your back. It's a liter of water weighs about two pounds. So if this thing's plump full, that's about four pounds. The best place to carry heavy items in your pack is right next to your spine. So having it right there is ideal. Plus it's under compression. So if you bite on the bite, valve, it just sprays water right into your mouth. It promotes hydration the whole time. If, if it's this bottle and it's tucked in some crazy thing that's hard to get to, believe me, you're not going to drink as much water as if you have a high hydration bladder of any variety with a good bite valve on it. And so I hope everybody has this for our hike in two weeks so you can practice with that. And if you haven't used one before, you'll see what I mean. Um, we're going to get to the cook gear. This is a great pot. It's a little over three liters and it's, it's the lightest, most durable pot that I've found. And I've had this one for three going on four years and I've beat the heck out of it and it works really, really, really well. You can boil a lot of water in it. it comes with a lid. You can cook in noodles. It has a strainer, so you can strain the noodles out of it. It also comes with a smaller pot that you can get going on another stove 
And this one's Teflon lined. So if you need to cook in it and like heat up like a couple cans of soup or something like that, it works really well. Works good for car camping, but it's also lightweight. It's not the heavy duty stainless steel stuff. That's three times the weight of this or more. So this stuff is durable enough to use on regular um, car camping trips, but light enough. It's yeah, great for every everyone will have a cook set. Not everyone. Mm -hmm. For our group size, thirteen people. I'm going to suggest that we have three of these. Okay. So for about every four people, have we, we can have this going. So these are listed as could be provided by Philmont. Do we want to bring our own or are we going to take theirs? theirs um, their pots are nasty and they are heavy. They don't, they don't have ones that are as nice as these guys. So should we say no and we'll make sure we have our own? I think we should say no and bring our own. Okay. And where are we going to get them? That's my recommendation for me. Okay, cool. That's awesome. <laughs> Some of them come with, these are, these are add-ons that I had that go inside of there. The sweet thing about these is, boom, this is where you can put your stove. This is the whisper light, but um, with some checking, I'm gonna vote that we take the WinPro stoves that take the isobutane, and the stove and the isobutane canister can all go right into here, and then just fold up instead of a mesh bag, and I, that's, that's a beautiful thing. Really easy. With this stuff, it's, just the, the lighter, smaller, the better. Because these aren't going to get used a lot. Personal cook gear. Super easy. Cup, bowl, spoon. It doesn't get any easier than that. You're going to love it. Just, you're going to drink your coffee or your juice or your hot chocolate out of there. You're going to have your bowl or two of gruel at the end of the day and all you need is a spoon. The more simple they are the better because then you can just lick them clean and maybe dip them in the sanitation water when, when you're done because that's what we do at Philmont. Um, part of the extra food, I love beef jerky, I'll be bringing it after that. There's this thing about um, Day pack with 10 essentials. It doesn't have to be much. Some of the guys in the troop have wonderful ones. Just something that stuffs inside of itself that's light, that maybe holds eight or 10 liters of gear. So when we have a rest day, it's not a rest day, we're still hiking. We're still gonna load all our 10 essentials in here, bunch of food, raincoat, insulating layers, and blah, blah, blah. And then we're gonna go on a day hike somewhere. So having something that's gonna carry that gear well with you is super important. Um, some of the true gear that Phil on recommends is having a, a hydration bladder. This is a six liter dromedary bag um, that we may want to invest in getting another one of. I'm gonna see if I can get my hands on another one. We picked that, one up last year after the kayaking. You did? It's, yeah, it's down, down there. We have a, is it a six liter like this guy? Yeah, you guys remember how big it was? The, the one on the, the water bladder, yeah, the water bladder mm -hmm. we picked up at the end. Fantastic. Let's was, bring it. It was like that. It was bigger than that. Probably the eight liter one then. Yeah, it might be. I can't remember. Even better. That's fantastic. That's great. Um, this is just a super light but big black trash bag. And you know what it's great for? Putting your backpack in when it's raining outside. You're in camp. Your tent's not set up, you pull your tent out, you just drop your whole backpack in here and close it up and your stuff stays dry. Then, Don't, some people have like a pack cover though? Some people have a pack cover. So this off, it's, it's one or the other. If your backpack comes with a pack cover, you're stoked. You just take that out, it's custom fit to your bag, you're stoked. If you don't have that, which mine doesn't, I do this. But here's another thing, all this stuff, can get wet. None of it matters. Your clothes matter, which is why you put your clothes in a dry bag. 
and your sleeping bag matters, which is why you put your sleeping bag in a dry bag. Those are the two big things. So this is a this is a 20 degree down bag. It, it's small and it's light, but it's in a dry bag. So if I'm hiking in the rain and my backpack isn't waterproof and I put a pack cover on, I don't care. The stuff that I need to stay dry is gonna stay dry. The backpack's nylon, some of the water will run off. It'll get a little bit wet. But then here's, here's all the clothing layers, and we're going to go over those in a second. How, how big is that dry bag for the clothes? Um, 10, like 10 or 12, 10 or, it's size large. <laughs> so, uh, Fair enough. But also get 20, that looks like some of the ones that we took on the kayak. This isn't yeah, 20. Personal, personals were 10, right? The ones in the... Yeah, but some, this, oh, like the food bag. I'm going to guess right? that this oh, is yeah. around a that 10. That looks like a food bag. I'm gonna guess this is around 10 meters. Maybe 12, but by the time it's, I mean, we're we're talking we're talking rolled up capacity. Right. We could see how many one liter Nalgene bottles of water we could pour in it when we get home. I have an answer for you. But it doesn't. It like this yeah. is as many clothes as you need. Right. If you have more than this. You're overdoing it, probably, okay. to some extent. All right. um, you know, we've all we're all going to have lightweight backpacking tents of some variety or another. The only other thing that's in here that I'll show you first before getting the clothes is it's just an air mattress. It's about the size of a Foster's beer can, right? But way lighter, and there's no insulation to it. I'm not going to be sleeping on the snow or anything. It's going to be summertime, but comfort. You blow them up, then you lay on it, and you let air out until your shoulder blades and your butt just touch the ground, and then you close it, and you're set. Hmm. If you leave all the air in, you're floating on top, it's just going to be kind of hard and tough and not that fun. Denver. Uh, for the clothes, um, when do we want to, when do we want to only take, like, a few things, like, like, an extra t-shirt, uh, and just super minimal clothes, not a huge bag like that. Like I know we have to have like raincoats. We have to be prepared rain for coat. thunderous rain and freezing temperatures. Because we might, we might get that. We'll be in the mountains and strange I, things happen in the mountains. I realize that it seems like all we need is like a coat. Uh, raincoat, uh, rain. Raincoat? Let's see. Raincoat and a t shirt? No, and then, a, and, then a, and then a coat. And then just like an extra pair A raincoat of clothes. and then a coat and then what? Uh, just like an extra pair of clothes, like extra pair of socks. Like a few of those. Cause... And a pair of socks. So that's all, the, that's all we need. Raincoat, coat, and socks. Okay, whatever. Alright, keep going. Okay, so I have a whole list here, Denver. If you want, I'd love it if you read it. So on the back page of this, it's clothing. Rain coat and pants. Rain coat and pants. How my rain pants are bigger than my rain coat, I have no idea. <laughs> Wool or synthetic stocking cap. This is a lightweight stocking cap. It's super lightweight. Why did I bring a light one? Because I know that my puffy coat has a hood on it. And that's really sweet. Light gloves. This is optional. This is the only thing on the clothing list I think is optional. It's having lightweight wool gloves. Mm -hmm. I don't, but I just brought an example. Lightweight wool or synthetic gloves. Not brown cotton garden gloves. Warm coat synthetic. If you're lucky, you get something that's like synthetic puffy insulation type stuff like this. Mm -hmm. The troop fleece jackets will also work. They're, they're gonna be heavier and they're not gonna be as compact. Some sort of fleece type thing. As long as it's warm enough for you. I run cold, so with regards to that, I also bring a down vest that just keeps my core mm -hmm. extra warm. It's super light, it's super compressible, it's nothing, but it doubles what this jacket's 
capacities can do. So warm coat, synthetic. Warm sweater, wool or synthetic. And I brought an example of, of a wool, just a wool base layer. Mm. You know, it's a zippered neck, covers up your neck a little bit more, that makes it a little bit more warmer. Wool doesn't stink, synthetic does. So I won't have many enemies at the end of nine days on the trail. Um, and then long sleeve, lightweight shirt, preferably with collar and buttons to use as sun protection. Mm. This was my proven favorite. It's cotton, yeah, cotton kills, but I'm using it as sun protection. Super lightweight, it's gonna be breathable. If it gets all sweated out, um, it's not gonna be uncomfortable or anything like that, but it's super light and you can pop the collar, you're hiking in the sun. If you're like me, I don't totally do the whole sunblock everywhere kind of thing. I'll put on a shirt, super lightweight and breathable, and it's snappy. So you can, it's really versatile. Like if a button gets pulled, the button won't pop, it'll just unsnap. And long sleeve and collar. You use that, this works great as sun protection, especially with a vented ball cap and a bandana works wonders also. When, when you put it underneath your head and you get this thing all wet and you put it underneath, you put it on your head and you put your hat on top, you're like cool and totally sunblocked and, and you're really, really, really happy. Deborah, you remember us doing that? Yeah, I'm gonna do that the whole entire time. A trip. lot. It works fantastic. And it's sunblock that doesn't rub off or anything like that. Short sleeve shirt is what it says. Plain Jane, this one happens to be wool, so it's not gonna stink. Bring whatever, even if it's cotton. Are we still getting true film up through? Yes. Tees, okay, awesome. Are those gonna be cotton or synthetic, can, right? I'm, I think we just let everybody choose their own. Oh. Some people prefer yes. cotton, some people prefer silk. Cool. Uh, I'll send out an order with Marek, we'll do it this week. Then the long underwear, top and bottom. Preferably wool, lightweight, synthetic is actually gonna work fantastic. These are a little bit heavy. It's what I have, um, is, is wool long johns, but like lightweight synthetic will also work. Because another thing that you're gonna have is, you're gonna have your shorts, which Here's a pair of the, the green scout shorts, and like I'm wearing, these scout pants. So if you have a pair of long johns on with your pants, and you put your rain pants over that, that should be pretty warm for the mountain conditions that we'll be in. If it gets any colder than that, you can wrap up in your sleeping bag and nuggle in your tent or something like that. But that's a, that's a normal amount of, of warm clothes to bring. Two pairs of socks, wool or synthetic. I recommend a blend that's mostly wool, but the synthetic helps keep it in shape. Uh, keep it in shape. Get kind of fresh ones, not ones that are super worn out and beat down and starting to get a little bit threadbare. Your feet will love you for it. Um, I had long pants on there, a pair of shorts, convertible if possible. It's nice to have two pairs instead of one pair of convertibles. If you have a major blowout in those, you'll be bumming if you don't have a backup pair. So I like to split them up a little bit. Uh, a couple pair of underwear. I recommend synthetic ones. Um, I recommend against cotton ones. Sturdy hiking boots with at least 25 miles on them, at least. Hopefully everybody will be wearing their boots in two weeks for our trip that they'll be taking the film on as well. Any tips on boots? Ones that, hopefully everyone's done enough hiking, they know what a good boot is for them that's gonna really work. Um, don't get heavy boots that are super stiff and, and weigh more than what they really need to. So go with, go with a softer boot that can flex more like a tennis shoe, that's gonna be comfortable, Something that provides a little bit of ankle support. It doesn't have to be the big tall all the way up. I'm wearing, I'm gonna be wearing this shoe for the trip. 
It's a low top, but I know I can get away with it because I've hiked in this shoe a lot before. And I've hiked in taller boots that were just unnecessary for me. So it depends on your level of experience and, and what you feel comfortable in. Um, this has enough padding that it's gonna get me by. And by all means, do yourself a, a favor and get yourself some super feet to put in there. Because they're really they're, they're really comfortable. And I'm gonna get some fresh ones right before the trip as well. If your feet start hurting, it's a bummer. They don't need to be like super waterproof. Um, but make them, get them so that they're well built. Things gonna dry out pretty quickly in Philmont because it's the desert, even if it does rain. Yeah, when it does rain, we'll get that. Shoes are hard to dry out when you're wearing them though. Mm. That's the only problem. But unless you're walking like in sun-baked rock field for hours, they might not dry out in days time. Should we bring like slippers or camp shoes? That is on the list. Um, is right underneath sturdy hiking boots is lightweight camp shoes. And it, a perfect example of that are Crocs, hmm. because they cover your toes, you're running around camp, and you stumble into something if you're not going to like. A bad example, I think, are Tevas, hmm. or like those Velcro on type ones. They're heavy. Hmm. Those weigh, it's like a big, thick chunk of rubber with, with minimal protection. They're not that great. Crocs are super duper comfortable and they're super duper light. That's all you need. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. They're not. They're not the, the heavy ones I had previously. The pretty the ones I have now are pretty light. The Tevas. Light for light. for camp shoes. I was just thinking like some thick little socks that I have in the Tevas. Yeah, yeah. Would it? But yeah. Uh, those are my recommendations. Yeah, green. Uh, appreciate it. You know, whatever um, whatever you think is going to work for you. Because keep in mind, it's going to be. Um, and it's optional. If you have a pair of shoes that you can live in the whole time, then you don't need to bring another pair of camp shoes. But if you're going to be wearing some heavier boots, say you're going to be carrying like a 50 to 60 pound pack, like we did on our week long 50 mile, we carried all of our food and all of our fuel from day one when they were heavy packs. So we had more ankle support and more gear and packed extra shoes as well. Um, and class A's, we're gonna, everyone's gonna bring class A's. So a couple other things that were on there. You saw the hat and bandana. Um, Philmont is actually where I learned to carry a bandana. And every backpack and I've ever been on since then, I've carried a bandana. Um, it's a towel, it's a hot pad. I bring two, one's like my clean one, one's my dirty one. So you can, you can figure that out. I wear my clean one around my neck for just whatever, some protection. The other one is like, I can wash off my feet and do dishes with it and <laughs> loan, it to some, loan it to somebody and I don't care and I get it back. It's like, okay, whatever. So, and they're super light and they work great for first aid applications. You can tie stuff up. I don't need to go into that. But uh, avoid cotton except for your bandanas and your sun shirt. That's, that's not a lot of stuff. Um, Yay. That's it. Yeah. Take a bow. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to you guys.